Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 288 of the show. Um, I'm Ron Meehan, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and author interviews. This week I have three new reviews for your folks at home. That's going to include uh, The Mysteries of the Relic Pyramid, Reality Banner's book number nine, uh, Dungeon Walker's book number three, and He Who Fights a Monster's book number six, uh, which came out a little bit ago, but just, just doing the podcast now, so here we go. Uh, before we get into any of those reviews, though, we're going to go into some Lit RPG news. And we got one quick story for you in Lit RPG news. We have uh, a nice little note from the good folks at Sound Blue Theater, the narrators of the hit Lit RPG series, Dungeon Crawler Carl. Uh, they release a standalone song, and the voice of Princess Donut from the same series. It's actually a surprisingly good song. Uh, I think it's kind of cute. We'll play a little bit of it for you at the end here. Um, but it's meant for you know for fun, for readers. and not actually charge you anything to download it. You can pick it up. You can hear it on YouTube. We'll have a link in the show notes. Or you can download it from the Sound Booth Theater uh, website where they sell audiobooks on their own stuff uh, before they put them up on Audible. Uh, and you can download it for free. And if you wish to choose to, you can actually tip them. And any of the tips that you, you send will actually be donated to the ASPCA. So um, you'll be <laughs> sending money to a good cause. So there you go. But let's put up the actual thing on the bop here. Okay. It's gonna be the day, gonna fireball an orc or two. By now, he'll be saying out with his body melting down to stew. I won't retrieve that looted body with all that gummy goo until you chow. Dark meat, the flesh tastes sweet, now the fire on his face is out. For sure you've tasted all before, but you never really had a doubt. I won't retrieve that looted body with all that yummy goo until you chow. And all the caves we have to crawl are bleeding. And all the mobs that die for us are screaming. There are many things that I would like to feed to you, but I don't have time. Well, there we go. Um, nice, like a nice, fun musical number. Uh, for, every, for any of the fans for Dungeon Crawler Car, go listen to the full song. It's about three minutes long. Uh, I'm just not going to play the whole thing for you here, but so go check it out. Okay, that's it for Lit RPG News. Uh, we're going to go on to some uh, stuff that's come out recently since the last episode of the podcast. So it's uh, <laughs> got a quite a long list here for new stuff in ebooks, audiobooks, and upcoming stuff. But here we go. We're going to start out with uh, Empire Rising, a dark fantasy Lit RPG adventure with a grand game. Looks like this is a, uh, a, a, a story within the grand game universe by Roham V. Vinder, but it's also included as a co author with Tom Elliott. Um, also, what right now is Dark Town Funk, the bad guys book number nine. Also, the Immortal Shell Creations Bane, book number two, uh, Eternal Dominion, book number eight, the Seven Deadly Demons, book number three is out. Excuse me, the World of Magic, book number four is also out, as is Apocalypse Online, book number four. Also, the Arise Dark Crusader, which is the second book in that series, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also, a story called Tower of Somnus, book number one, Foundation. Also, City Building Lit RPG, book number two, King Minos. Uh, the fifth book in the Sense and Stratroll series finally came out. I know they had some pre-order issues with Amazon where they were delayed and pushed back and pushed back and finally canceled and then they couldn't do it again. And so just, it finally came out. So go enjoy it. Um, the second book in the Monster Haven book number two series is out for you. The Great Core Paradox is also out. The second book in the Valvidalian Villain book number two is out series. Uh, the Infinite Realm book number four is also out, as is a new story called The Oath of a Mad Dog. Uh, 
Um, also from Wolf and Caliban, it is going to casual farming book number two. The second book of the last born of Kirdarth series is out. If you like book number one, uh, also out is the rise of the winter wolf book number two. This is, um, yeah, the change. The sixth book in the divine apostasy series is out. The third book in the in the system series is out for you to enjoy as well. The second book in the saga of the seer series is out. Uh, also, the world over book number two is out, as is the legend of Randley Ghost Hound book number three. Also, we hunt monsters book number three is out for you to enjoy. A new series called Apocalypse Unleashed. Um, also out is In Another World I Must Train My Dungeon, a little bit adventure book number two. Uh, the Cultivator vs. the System book number two has finally came out. The Wandering In book number seven is out as e an ebook and as an audiobook. I'm listening to it as an audiobook right now and I'm, I'm enjoying it. And it's always good stuff. Andrea is a, Andrea is a great narrator uh, who has more than 10 voices. Uh, the 10th Realm, uh, which is the 12th book in the series, and I believe this is the final book in the series, is out for you to enjoy. So I'll have to pick it up again potentially. <laughs> I think I dropped it a little while ago. I just missed one of whoever i missed something in the series i can never like generally skip ahead uh but you know it's always been a fun series so i'll i'll, I'll make the effort to go read the last one um but for fo folks who've enjoyed the series go go get it uh the 11th book in the discardium series is out as of today called out to play unbound book number three is also out as well for, uh, in the hunger series hunger unbound book number three Okay, in audiobooks, we have quite a nice selection for you as well, including Reigns of Liscor, The Wandering in Book Number 7, which I already mentioned, um, The Ring of Rising Insanity of an Outcaster in Another World, Book Number 3, uh, The Towers of Achillea, Book Number 6 is out, the 14th book in the Dragon Heart series is out, the third book in the Control System Natural Law series is out, Information is Power, World Keeper, Book Number 9. Uh, I honestly haven't heard from Justin Miller uh, quite some time, so it was interesting to see. Oh, he is putting out audiobooks and <laughs> ebooks still. So, uh, it's, it's a World Keeper is always a nice little fun little RPG series. So, uh, go check it out. Uh, Apocalypse Unleashed is also out as an audiobook and ebook. Uh, this one was actually a surprise. The Sarah Lynn has been doing phenomenally well in a lot of her series. This series, unfortunately, wasn't one that um, seemed to catch on, although I really enjoyed it. It's called the New Game series, New Game Minus. This is the second book in the series, and it's out as an audiobook. Um, I liked all the books in the series, personally. Um, also out as an audiobook is the In Another World I Must Train My Dungeon, book number two. Um, also out as the second book is the Nexus Games, um, Randley Go Go uh, Legend of Randley Ghost Town, book number three, out as an audiobook and ebook. Third book in the Centennial Tournament Infinite Realm series is out for you to enjoy. Also, the third Apocalypse Volume 1 is out. Um, I think the official ebook title was a lot longer. Like, it was like the second time around for the reincarnation of the something something third Apocalypse Volume 1 and <laughs> for the audiobook version because it's made by Podium. They shortened that not a lot to just, huh, third Apocalypse. But it's a regressive story. And I actually really liked it. Um, the eighth book in the idol system is out for you to enjoy called redo the vaudevillian book number two is out as an audiobook and ebook dark lines online book number three is out as an audiobook the great cores paradox out as an ebook and audiobook as is we hunt monsters book number two uh dead mech walking armored souls book number one by xavier hunter is out as an audiobook actually all three of these are out as an audiobook and they're doing a um i want to say a compilation the uh the one that we mush them all together um so they actually doing all four titles at, at once, which seems weird to me because I feel like that would eat cells from your other things that you're, if you're putting all three of them individually and then also the compilation, who would buy any of the individual ones? So, but anyways, they're out for you. Um, not bad stories. The uh, <laughs> Revenging Dungeon, uh, the Monster Haven book number two series is out. Um, Foundations, Tower Somnus, book number one as an audiobook, uh, finally, and also the Delvers LLC Hostel Takeover is out. The ebook came out about a month ago, and the audiobook is out for you to enjoy right now. If you never had a chance to catch up and pick it up, it's out for you to enjoy from Sambu Theater. Um, also, Alpha Rise, book number one, is out as an audiobook when the ebook is out for you to enjoy. Um, returning, no applause, only more of the same, and a Sekai, and a Sekai lit RPG. There you go. 
the Apocalypse Online book number four, out as an audiobook. He Who Fights the Monsters book number six, also out as an audiobook. And finally, uh, Death's Favorite Lorelock book number three is out as an audiobook for you to enjoy. This one actually came out at the end of last month, uh, end of June. And I just missed it. We did our, our, our podcast right before we came out, so we just weren't able to talk about it. So I've listened to it. Great stuff. I reviewed the book. Amazing stuff. So go check it out. If you've never listened to the series or anything by Charles Dean, definitely uh, give it a shot. There's lots of great t- uh, titles from that particular author and narrator. Okay, on to upcoming Little RPG things that are coming out in the near future. Uh, this is going to include last couple days here in July, all of August, all of September. So if I'm missing anything, like your ebook isn't showing up on Amazon for some reason as a pre-order, um, let me know. Um, otherwise, this is a great place for listeners to like be able to plan out their listening schedule or reading schedule as their budget allows. They can be like, oh, this one's coming out of here. Got to send my bucks. This one's expensive. Or if you have KU, got to plan out my, my slots. Um, so as of July 28th, we're going to start off with Undead Reckoning, Realms of Power and Fury, book number four. August 8th is going to bring a Summoner Shadow, book number three. August the 9th is going to be Solo, Solo Leveling, volume five. I think this is an amazing series. I love the manhwa or the webcomic version of it. Novel, has, uh, ebook novel here is even better. Um, also out on August the 9th is going to be The Way Ahead, book number two. On August the 9th, it'll also be the RPG Apocalypse, book number three. August the 11th, it'll be the Trickster's Tale, book number two. August the 11th, it'll be Alpha Physics, book number six. August the 15th, it'll be the World of Chains, book number four, The Court Bard uh, by Lars M. This has actually been a fantastic series. I've enjoyed every single book here, so definitely encourage you to read this one. Um, on August the 16th, it'll be The Deathless Dungeoneers, The Dungeon Diver Adventure. Book number one, August the 16th, it'll be Karyos, book number three. August the 16th as well, it'll be Defiance of the Fall, book number six. On August the 17th, it'll be the Vaudevillian, Vaudevillian, book number three. I always want to say something else, Vaudevillian, like another noun for some reason. So it's just, it's just Vaudevillian, um, book number three. On August 22nd, I want to, it's going to be Untamed Lands, the Four Laws Little RPG book. On August the 23rd, Neverstone book number three. August the 23rd as well, it'll actually be a new book from James A. Hunter um, from the Viridian Gate Online series, which is uh, ended, I believe. And it's going to be called Virgil Justice. Now, this isn't necessarily in the same universe. I don't think it is. Uh, I remember reading the novel description. Just, it's an entirely new thing uh, by an author that you probably love like I do. Um, on August 23rd, it'll be the Battle Mage Farmer book number two. August 29th, Legends of the Six Realms, book number one. August the 30th, The Primal Hunter, book number three. August 31st, The Bone Knight, book number nine. On July 29th, it'll be Harbinger of Destruction. On September the 6th, it'll be Steamforged Heresy, Steamforged Sorcery, book number two. And August, sorry, September 6th, it'll be Sky Raiders, King's Elite, book number four. September the 6th, it'll be Chrysalis, book number two. September the 9th, it'll be The Range, book number five. September the 13th, Badges of Dorkum, book number three. On September 13th, it'll be He Who Fights With Monsters, book number seven. On September the 25th, it'll be Tower Apocalypse, book number two. On September 26th, Prism Academy, Demis, a little pretty superhero adventure. On September 27th is My Best Friend is an Eldritch Horror, book number one. On September 27th, it'll be The Temperamental Enchantress, a new home, book number two. September 27th as well, it'll be the second book in the Apocalypse Cultivation series, Savage Webs. And that's it. That's all the stuff I can find for July, August, and September. And again, if you will also have all these notes and lists and links in the show notes and also on our website at littlebeautypockets.com in a recommendation section. So if you want to go check it out, you can always uh, find us there. So on to the new releases and reviews. Okay, this week we're going to start off with The Mysteries of the Relics and Pyramid, Reality Benders, book number nine, written by Michael Antimanoff. Uh, it is 495 pages. It is $6.99. It's not available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. Nat the Devourer is becoming a more prominent figure in grand space politics. Sure, he may not be totally independent yet, but he is enough leeway to be able to differentiate Earth's interests from those of its gecko citizens and act exclusively for the good of his own kind. 
Nat must balance obligations to his almighty citizens against a desire to advance humanity's position in space, in space and his home planet's search for the ever more allies. Although Earth's masters are not big fans of his independent ways, the Great War has shifted the historical balance of forces, and the Gecko are no longer as powerful as they once were, leaving them to do with no choice but to abide the Kung of Earth's antics. So, will Earth be able to take this chance and free itself from alien control completely? And if so, is it even a good idea? And that means one of the human leaders will have to back down. Okay, that's sort of a weak... <laughs> description it, it really it, i mean it, it it does have some of the ideas but it it, it leaves you a, a little like okay that's that's a, that's a statement now about saying what you're going to do here um full disclosure i received advanced copy for review i purchased a copy when it became available um this is a fun series it really is um, i i've never been disappointed with anything in the reality bender series i'm probably going to say i still enjoy some of the first books a little bit more but this has still been a, a very nicely told stories. It, it is very slice of life, and that the main character at this point is is, is writing a space hopper kind of story where um, everything's happening in space. He's he's always away from Earth. He very rarely even gets out of his capsule, which puts him back in, in a normal space and not in the game that alters reality. Um, and so it really just feels a lot like a space opera. The main character and a ship go to different places. They, they fight in these huge, big, epic space battles in the, in the novel. Um, and they have these um, bit of intrigue between these different factions um, and trying to decide where he wants to invest his time and energy to further humanity's ability to survive in this like ever complex and ever aggressive universe and against these alien forces. Um, and so again, it, it feels very space opera, but again, there's still the same level for better or worse of, of the RPG progression from the last few books. And that, the main character, when he does stuff, he gets notifications, he gets level increases, he gets stat skills. Um, and you know, so they, all that exists as notifications. Um, in, in the story. So, so, so there is still some RPG progression. I mean, it's not something that necessarily um, is, is a main focus of the story like it was in the, like the first few books in the novel, him focusing on leveling up and figuring out the rules of the game. At this point in the story, he's, he's already advanced his class and his position within this uh, hierarchy of, of, of Kung's and whatever other <laughs> titles they do for, for people who, who have influence within their universe and their, their game universe. Um, and it's just, you know, it's fun in its own way, you, but at this point you would have had to read all the other books to really appreciate these things. So, um, for me, as I was reading, I found like some of the best scenes for me weren't necessarily the space battles, which are really good. It's just some of the smaller scenes, the smaller interactions with characters that I've already come to really enjoy and seeing how they come together. I was like, oh, some of those like really small scenes, like, uh, they're really just a like, couple of like, they're just like really well run. Like, oh, this is. I want you to be happy. And that's always a good sign. It's always like you being engaged with the story and the characters. Um, one of the only probably negative things I could say is like, oh, there's there's a towards the end, there's this uh, betrayal that felt a little, you know, forced and not particularly impactful. Um, but other than that, not everything in the story is really entertaining. So for me, uh, gets a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. I read this thing in like, in like two sittings. I've always enjoyed it. So it's always going to get a nice, good review for me. It's better than average. So like nice, uh, like really good, entertaining story. But of course, if you're this deep into the, this series, you probably already know that. So that's the mysteries of the Relic Pyramid, Reality Benner's book number nine, uh, with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. Okay, next up is going to be Dungeon Walkers 3 by Daniel Schienhofen. It is 568 pages. It is $4.99. It's available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. Since starting a crew and a relationship with Kyra and Trish, Stern was hopeful and nervous. They'd officially registered their crew, positively irregular, and their icon depicting a polydactyl cat's paw. Leaving Darkstone behind, they arrived in Water Rock, settling in to find more crew members uh, a lucky encounter introducing introduced them to cami and volk dwarven siblings and the two were hesitant but agreed to a trial run through the local dungeon and that first run went well and cami and volk signed on permanently with stern's crew however the camaraderie was a little lacking so they spent time in the city training and getting to know one another by the time they reached the town of whitewater they'd started to gel as a unit until 
both inside and out of the dungeons. Now, it's a unit both inside and out of the dungeons. During their time together, Cammy and Vulcan admitted that they were running dungeons to save their mother, who had infractured when they were children. It was after a night out that Volk met his future wife and an old enemy came back into Stern's life. Victor Bloodcoin hadn't given Stern his son forgiven Stern for his son's death, and by using Volk as a hostage, the old mayor forced a confrontation. Once that unsettled, Victor was dead, Volk had been freed, and Stern had a goal, caring, calling on his family. He had the dwarves' mothers revive, re retrieved and reborn, then brought her to the city. The happy reunion allowed Volk and his lover to settle down and marry. Um, I'll be honest, the, all that stuff is like from book two, um, so it's kind of a long intro. It continues. Uh, Cammy stayed on even though her brother had given up running and the crew headed north towards Mistwood. The writing was nearly on the wall and emotions were running high. They needed to find more crew members and see how that would affect them. They'd find out when they reached the next city. Whoa, that is such a long intro. Like, I'll be honest, that introduction is longer than my entire review. And only that last paragraph really is like, oh, that's, that's what's happening here. So, you know. Okay, this is a slice of life, um... This is a nice life story. You really just find the main character and his group as they go dungeon diving. And they have conflicts with other characters because the main character has a certain um, visual appearance that reminds us of, of a war that happened that, that happened a while ago. Uh, people are still on edge about it on a regular. Um, and it, it's really about that, that prejudice and those conflicts that occur with other people. Um, and a couple of recurring villains, which have kind of been phased out as of like book two, um, but are mentioned in this novel description. Um, and that's what it is. So it's it in that respect, I've always enjoyed it. It's it's a it's a good, solid, entertaining story, and there's a lot of people who really enjoy it. It has a polyamorous uh, relationship, like a lot of the other things by this author. But in this particular book, there's no sex scenes. Like there is some romantic stuff, um, but you know, but there is adult content of like, oh, this is like real relationship that involves um, talk of being attracted to one another and kind of fade to black scenes occasionally. Um, but overall, it re that's a very small section of the story. Most of it is just kind of this dungeon diving slice of like nature, but trying to find other groups in this particular instance to to add into his his you know his now sh you know shortened group since someone in the group left la the last book. Um, and that's what the story is. It's it's the beginning of the story. I'd say wasn't as engaging as I would have liked, but by the time it hits about 30, 20 percent in rather. It's, it's off to good adventuring again, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the, in this particular entry, uh, there is an addition of another irregular into this into this grouping, and I l really enjoyed the fact that there was an opportunity to explore this um, condition from someone else's perspective besides the main characters. All of how this time we've seen, oh, this is how he is react to as he goes to these towns goes and meets these people um it was nice to see someone else's perspective and how they either had it worse or better or their own particular issues and i, I enjoyed sort of the combined benefit of having more than one irregular in a group i thought oh that's a nice that's a nice bonusy game thing happening there because of this so i'm like oh good stuff and of course you get plenty of progression as they do at the end of each each uh, each dungeon dive they get a chance to upgrade their abilities or skills if they've accrued enough um i forget what they're called in the book like points or whatever or crystals and or they can use some of those things to you know, help other people who have died and get reborn and, and continue on to live. In addition to that, um, you know, the there is some interesting story twists that relate to some of the author's other series, which I'm not going to spoil, but I like the path that it's leading to and the potential for opening up this uh, game universe to to bigger threats that are that are outside of its normal conditions. So I thought it was kind of a neat ending there at the end. So for me, really solid story, gets a score of 7.5 out of 10, which is just you know, solid, good, middle, middle getting here. And that's Dungeon Walkers 3 with a score of 7.5 out of 10. Okay, next up is going to be He Who Fights at Monsters, book number six, written by Shirt Loon. This is 568 pages, $6.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, I should note that I'm actually, I actually listened to this as an audiobook. Uh, so there's an entertaining story in that respect as well. Um, but here is the novel description. The world teeters on the brink of destruction. The people who should have been saving Earth ignore Jason Asano's warnings and choose to loot the house as it burns down around them. He lacks the strength to save the world himself, but resolves to do it anyways. Impossible be damned. 
The impossible, in this case, means seizing a power that no mortal should touch. It's a choice from which there's no turning back and Jason's first steps into a wider cosmos that he is not yet ready to face. Holding the fate of two worlds in his hands, Jason must decide for himself what home truly means. Yeah, that's actually a really nice description. It, it touches on all the big points without actually telling you anything that's going to happen and spoiling things. Um, so again, uh, this is, uh, the, I actually didn't read this as an ebook. I actually listened as an audiobook, and it was a fantastic experience on the narration side of things. The, the narrator is amazing. Um, I'd have to look up to see who it is, but he's, he's an Australian narrator and man, or his accent's great. Like I, I've always really enjoyed his stuff. His American accent's a little like, okay, I, I guess that's technically American, but you know, um, but his other accents that he does and his voices are just fantastic. And they really, you know, punch up the, the story a notch for me. Um, as far as the content of the story itself, yay. That's how I always feel about these particular stories, especially since I kind of shifted from the ebook version to the audio version in this particular series. Uh, the audiobook narration just really, you know, knocks it up a, an extra level for me. Um, Jason is still on earth in this book. Uh, this story does end the Earth arc. It really does cap off everything, all the all the issues that were involved in the series, and the way the issues develop. I thought were actually really interesting. There's some um, politicking going on. There is some, um, you know, working with the enemy, enemy for the greater good kind of stuff going on in this story. And I thought all those social conflicts and all the, you know, betrayals or whether or not they happen or not, or the tough almost villainous choices the main character may have to make, um, you know, for the benefit of humanity to make sure that his earth, his home planet, you know, and his family and everything all survive. And some of the threats that are made because of those decisions all had very good and realistic consequences. And so I, I really enjoyed those conflicts. And, and of course the action is always good. Like the actual physical fighting stuff is plenty, plenty of this thing. This is a, a good, long, entertaining story. Um, there are a few places towards the end where I was like, oh, those villain actions felt a little bit forced and they felt a little like, oh, these things happened out of scene and we're just letting you know about them now so we can do this, further this plot thing. And you know, that happens, that it, it, the plot does advance and it's nothing that the main character does. It is all stuff that for the villains and their actions. Um, it felt a little bit forced, but it wasn't at big enough the deal for me to be like, oh, this ruins it. It's like, oh, okay, that's, Okay, it has to happen, I guess, for, for these villainous actions to work and for this particular plot line to unfold. Um, but the final results were entertaining. I was like, okay, we'll let it go. Uh, but they were notable for me. Overall, though, I thought this was a, a great story, um, especially again because the narration really just bumps up the entertainment value, um, for me at least in this particular pace. Um, the, the ebook version. Um, so I'm, I'm giving a score of 8 out of 10. It's a great story. I'm sure if you have been listening to it or reading it, you, you probably agree enough <laughs> reviews. So that's the case. Uh, so He Who Fights a Monster is book number six with a score of 8 out of 10. It's a great story. Okay, folks, that is it. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening, for watching. Remember, if you uh, want to check us out and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website, um, you can find out all the links in the show notes. Remember, our website address is litrpgpodcast.com, and you can find us by the same name on any of those other platforms. Um, you can also listen to us and download us on a, on whenever we put out an episode on Spotify, on Audible, or a local podcasting app. Um, we have also have links in the show notes to various lit RPG groups where you can find your favorite authors, talking to your favorite readers, and people asking for recommendations, and you can get a whole bunch of information about um, stuff in the genre if you're looking for a particular thing, or you can check out our own database of titles uh, and things that we've actually reviewed at our, at our website at littlebeachpodcast.com using our search bar. We have like um, well over a thousand you know reviews that we've done for various series. Okay, um, thank you again for hanging out with us, and until we can hang out again and you can see us, <laughs> go read some little RPG. Go, 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 go read.